Learning Objectives After studying this module, students will be able to Identify different forms of business organization Explain features, merits and limitations of different forms of business organizations Distinguish between various forms of organizations and Discuss the factors determining choice of an appropriate form of business organization. Business Environment Nature and Significance Business Environment Business Environment is the total of all external forces, factors and institutions that are beyond the control of the business. All these factors have a direct influence on the business functioning. Features of Business Environment Totality of External Forces Business Environment is sum total of all the external factors which are directly, indirectly affecting the performance and existence of an organization. Specific and General Forces Business Environment includes both specific and general forces. Specific forces includes investors, customers, competitors and suppliers. These factors affect individual enterprises directly and immediately in their day-to-day -day working. Interrelatedness Each part of business environment are related to one another. For example, increased life expectancy of people health awareness programs have multiplied the demand for health-related products and services. Dynamic Nature Dynamism is one of the most important features of business environment. It keeps on changing in terms of technological terms, consumer preferences, competition and so on. Uncertainty Business environments is uncertain and it is very difficult to predict the future. It is more difficult especially when environment changes are taking place too frequently. This is very true in the case of information technology or fashion industries. Complexity Business environment is interconnected and keeps its dynamism always. This dynamism can arise from different sources and conditions, which creates complexity in business environment. It is difficult to predict exactly the future and to deal with the changing situations. Relativity Business environment is a relative concept. The environment differ from region to region, country to country, and even place to place. Joint Hindu Family Firm Joint Hindu Family Firm The Joint Hindu Family, also known as Hindu Undivided Family, HUF, is a non-corporate form of business organization. It is a firm belonging to a joint Hindu family. The eldest male member of the family, called Karta, and the other male members are called co-parsoners. Karta inherit the ancestral property. Under this system, Karta is liable for the management of family business. Features of HUF As a joint form of business organization created, by the operation of law joint Hindu family business have several features. Some of the important among them are discussed below. Membership by birth A person, a member in the family business by virtue of his birth in the joint Hindu family. No formal agreement between the members is necessary. There must be at least two members in the family and the ancestral property must be inherited by them. Minor Member A minor can become the member of a joint Hindu family and he can enjoy all the rights and powers of an eldest member. Restrictions on Female Membership Under the Hindu law, only male members are allowed to become co-parsoners. Female members do not get any share in the family business. Women can become the member only in the Dayabhagi system under the special circumstances. No limit on membership. Under joint Hindu family system, any number of members 
can become the co-personers. The minimum number required is 2. No need for registration. The activities of joint Hindu family business are governed by Hindu law. Hence, such business requires no registration procedure. Management by Karta The activities of HUF are managed by the eldest male member of the family, who is known as Karta. Only Karta has the power to enter into the contract on behalf of the business. Other members have no right to question the decision of Karta. Partnership Partnership The Indian Partnership Act 1932 defines partnership as the relation between persons who have agreed to share the profit of the business carried on by all or any one of them acting for all. Features From the above definition, we can trace out the important features of a partnership business. Formation The partnership form of business organization is governed by Indian Partnership Act 1932. A partnership business comes into existence when two or more persons mutually agrees to do business together. Liability The partners of a firm have unlimited liability. Personal assets may be used for repaying debts in case the business assets are insufficient. Risk bearing Partnership is a team activity and hence the partners bear the risks involved in running a business as a team. The reward comes in the form of profits which are shared by the partners in an agreed ratio. However, they also share losses in the same ratio in the event of the firm incurring losses. Decision Making and Control In general case, all the partners have equal right to participate in the decision making process of a partnership firm. Decisions are generally taken with mutual consent. Thus, the activities of a partnership firm are managed through the joint efforts of all the partners. Number of Partners The minimum number of partners needed to start a partnership firm is 2. At present, the maximum number of members can be 50. Mutual Agency Every partner is both an agent and a principal. He is an agent of others' partner as he represents them and thereby binds them through this act. He is a principal as he too can be bound by acts of other partners. Types of Partners Types of Partners Partnership may be of different types. Depends upon the circumstances and conditions each partner can choose from the following categories. Active Partner An active partner is a person who actively participates in the day-to-day -day working of the business. He contributes capital, participates in the management of the firm, shares its profits and losses, and is liable to an unlimited extent to the creditors of the firm. Sleeping or Dormant Partner Sleeping partners are the partners, those who do not take part in the day-to-day -day activities of the business. A sleeping partner, however, contributes capital to the firm shares its profits and losses, and has unlimited liability to the third party. Secret Partner Presence of a sleeping partners are unknown to the public. However, he contributes to the capital of the firm, takes part in the management, shares its profits and losses, and has unlimited liability towards the creditors. Nominal Partner A nominal partner allows the firm to use his or her name. A nominal partner don't take any part in the business or share profit. However, for a third party, he is like other partners and liable for the debts of the firm. Partner by holding out or estopel A person is considered a partner by estopel if through his own initiative, conduct or behavior, 
he or she gives an impression to others that he is a partner of the firm. Such partners are held liable for the debts of the firm because in the eyes of the third party. Partner in profit only. These types of partners are not taking part in any daily activities of the business. They contribute capital and take part in the profit of the business. Types of Partnerships Types of Partnerships Partnerships can be classified on the basis of duration and the extent of business. On the basis of duration of business, it can be partnership at will and fixed period partnerships. On the basis of liability or extent of business, it can be general partnerships and particular partnerships. Partnerships at will The existence of this partnership depends on the will of the partners. The business of the firm continues as long as partners desire and is terminated when any partner gives notice for dissolution of the firm. Particular Partnership In this partnership, which is formed for completing only a particular project or any activity to be carried on for a special period of time only, this partnership is automatically dissolved on completion of the project or activity. General Partnership the partnership in which the liability of the partners is unlimited is called general partnership. In this type of partnership, partners have the right to take part in the management of the firm. Death, insolvency, retirement or leniency of any partner adversely affects the existence of the firm. Limited Partnership Limited partnership is the partnership in which the liability of at least one member is unlimited while others have limited liability. The members with limited liability neither have the rights to participate in the management of the business nor are their acts binding on other partners or the firm. Partnership Deed A partnership deed, also known as partnership agreement, is a document that outlines in detail the rights and responsibilities of all parties to a business operation. It has the force of law and is designed to guide the partners in the conduct of the business. It is helpful in preventing disputes and disagreements between the partners. Cooperative Societies Cooperative Societies Cooperative organization is a society which has its objective for the promotion of economic interests of its members in accordance with cooperative principles. The Indian Cooperative Societies Act 1912 Features The characteristics of a cooperative society are listed below. Voluntary membership The membership of a cooperative society is voluntary. A person is free to join a cooperative society and can also leave any time as per his desire. There cannot be any compulsion for him to join or quit a society. Service Motive The cooperative society through its purpose lays emphasis on the values of mutual help and welfare. Hence, the motive of service dominate its working. If any surplus is generated as a result of its operations, it is distributed amongst the members as dividend in conformity with the bylaws of the society. Control In a cooperative society, the power to take decisions lies in the hands of an elected managing committee. The right to vote gives the members a chance to choose the members who will constitute the managing committee and this lends the cooperative society as democratic character. One man, one vote Management and control of a cooperative society lies with the managing committee. Everyone in the cooperative society have one vote instead of the shares held by them. Hence, all the members will get equal rights in the society. Registration 
registration of a cooperative society is compulsory. Registration is done by the registrar of cooperative societies belonging to the concerned states. Distribution of surplus The profits of a cooperative society are distributed not in the proportion to the shares held by the members. Rather, it is based on the volume of business transacted by a member with the cooperative society. Types of cooperative societies Types of cooperative societies Based on the nature of business, cooperative societies are classified into various categories. The important among them are discussed below. Consumers' cooperative societies Consumers' cooperatives are formed by the consumers to obtain their daily requirements at reasonable prices. Such a society buys goods directly from manufacturers and wholesalers to eliminate the profits of middlemen. The profits of the society are distributed among members in the ratio of purchases made by them during the year. Producers' cooperatives Producers or industrial cooperatives are voluntary associations of small producers and artisans who join hands to face competition and increase production. These societies are of two types, industrial cooperatives and manufacturing cooperatives. Marketing cooperatives. These are voluntary associations of independent producers who want to sell their output at remunerative prices. The output of different members is pooled and sold through a centralized agency to eliminate middlemen. The sale proceeds are distributed among the members in the ratio of their outputs. Cooperative Farming Societies These are voluntary associations of small farmers who join together to obtain the economies of large-scale farming. In their individual capacity, they are unable to use modern tools, seeds, fertilizers, etc. They pool their lands and do farming collectively with the help of modern technology to maximum agricultural output. Housing Cooperatives These societies are formed by low- and middle-income group people in urban areas to have a house of their own. Housing cooperatives are of different types. Some societies acquire land and give the plots to the members for constructing their own houses. Joint Stock Companies Joint Stock Companies A company is an association of persons formed for carrying out business activities and has a legal status independent of its members. The company form of organization is governed by the Companies Act 1956. Features The definition of a joint stock company highlights the following features of a company. Artificial person A company is created by law and exists independent of its members. Like natural person, a company can own property, incur debts, borrow money, enter into contracts, sue and be sued, but unlike them, it cannot breathe, eat, run, talk, and so on. Separate legal entity. From the day of its incorporation, a company acquires an identity, distinct from its members. Its assets and liabilities are separate from those of its owners. Perpetual succession. A company is created by the law and hence it can only be ended up by law. Members may come and members may go, but the company continues to exist. Liability The liability of the members is limited to the extent of the capital contributed by them in a company. The creditors can use only the assets of the company to settle their claims since it is the company and not the members that owes the debt. Common Seal A company being an artificial person acts through its board of directors. The board of directors enters into an agreement with others by indicating the company's approval through a common seal. 
Risk bearing. The risk of losses in a company is borne by all the shareholders. In the face of financial difficulties, all shareholders in a company have to contribute to the debts to the extent of their shares in the company's capital. Merits and limitations of companies. Merits of companies. The company form of organization offers a multitude of advantages, some of which are discussed below. Limited liability. The shareholders are liable to the extent of the amount. Unpaid on the shares held by them. Also, only the assets of the company can be used to settle the debts leaving the owner's personal property free from any charge. Transfer of interest. The ease of transfer of ownership adds to the advantage of investing in a company as the share of a public limited company can be sold in the market and as such assets can be easily converted into cash in case the need arises. Scope of expansion. As compared to the sole proprietorship and partnership forms of organization, a company has large financial resources. Further, capital can be attracted from the public as well as through loans from banks and financial institutions. Professional Management A company can afford to pay higher salaries to specialists and professionals. It can therefore employ people who are experts in their area of specialization. The scale of operations in a company leads to division of work. Voluntary Association A joint stock company is a voluntary association of members formed to carry out a particular purpose in common. Members of a company can join it and leave it any time as they wish to do so. Limitations even if the companies have many advantages, it is not free from limitations. Important among them are information complexity, lack of secrecy, delay in decision, conflicts of interest, corrupt management, etc. Choice of a form of business organization Choice of a form of business organization Every form of business has its advantages and limitations. Hence, it is important to choose the most appropriate form of business. Here, we can discuss the important factors to be considered while selecting a form of business. Cost and ease in setting up the organization. Cost is the most important factor to be considered for a business. Sole proprietorship form of business is suitable for a beginner as it requires limited capital. Liability Liability factor should be considered as it has an impact on the business. In case of a sole proprietorship and partnership firms, the liability of the owners or partners is unlimited. The liability of a limited company is limited to the extent of its shares. Continuity Continuity of a business varies from sole proprietorship to joint stock companies. In case the business needs a permanent structure, company form is more suitable. For short-term ventures, proprietorship or partnership may be preferred. Management Ability A sole proprietor may find it difficult to have expertise in all functional areas of management. In other forms of organizations, like partnership and company, there is no such problem. Professional management leading to better decision-making. Capital considerations. Companies are in a better position to collect large amounts of capital by issuing shares to a large number of investors. But the resources of a sole proprietor are limited. Thus, if the scale of operations is large, company form may be suitable. Degree of control If direct control over operations and absolute decision-making power is required, proprietorship may be preferred. But 
if the owners do not mind sharing control and decision making, partnerships or company form of business can be preferred. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Forms of business organization refer to the types of organizations which differ in terms of ownerships and management. The major forms of organization include proprietorship, partnership, joint Hindu family business, cooperative society and company. Sole proprietorship refers to a form of organization where business is owned, managed and controlled by a single individual who bears all the risks and is only recipient of all the profits. Partnership is defined as an association of two or more persons who agree to carry on a business together and share the profits as well as bear risks collectively. Joint Hindu family business is a business owned and carried on by the members of a Hindu undivided family, which is governed by the Hindu law. A cooperative society is a voluntary association of persons who get together to protect their economic interests. The major advantages of a cooperative society are equality in voting, members' limited liability, stable existence, economy in operations, support from government, and ease of formation. Selection of an appropriate form of organization can be made after taking various factors into consideration. Initial costs, liability, continuity, capital considerations, managerial ability, degree of control, and nature of business are the key factors that need to take into account while deciding about the suitable form of organization for one's business.